about this indictment that became public last Monday uh, of Senegal's former foreign minister and an ECOSOC, uh, the head of an ECOSOC uh, uh, NGO, the China Energy Fund Committee. The reason it, I guess what I tried to figure this out last week and compare it to the UN's response when an indictment was announced of Eng Lapsang and he was the head of Sun Kyanip. I wanted to, it seems that on November 21st, after the indictment was announced, after questions were asked in this room, that an event went forward using $1 million from C CEFC. And I wanted to know, I did notice that, that and I want, you know, Fairhan had said things get canceled all the time. The photo op was canceled with the group or the winners of the award. The DSG's speech at the event was canceled, but the event went forward. So on what basis was there, did you consult, did the secretary, not you personally, consult OLA on the advisability of just following a detailed indictment about essentially this group's money being a bribery conduit going forward and handing the money out? I think, Where does it stand? I think, I think you should uh, contact the organizers of the meeting. But a, U, a, a UN decision was made. Mr. Liu of, of DESA was there. I think you should there. contact the organizers of the meeting. Who is, okay. meaning who? The organizers of the meeting. Is that DESA or the, the NGO? You should look into the meeting and see who the I'm organizers were. Do you were. speak for DESA? Because it, I, I, I'm just, that's, that's my, it's my answer to you. Uh, but, uh, do okay, you have another let me question? Ask you, has the UN done anything since last Monday, a full week? Both gentlemen are in jail. The former foreign minister of Senegal remains in jail. What has the UN done following a detailed indictment that describes bribery inside the UN building and involving UN structures like I don't read the indictment uh, in the same way as you know. The, uh, the consultative status of this organization was granted by member states, and it's up to them uh, to deal with the, uh, with the issues. And the other parts of the indictment, the way I read it, uh, does not involve anyone who is a staff member of this organization. One, just one final question. Thanks a lot, because you're, you're saying this NGO may have been accredited by, but may, to ECOSOC by member states, but a decision I'm not was may, made. I'm not, I'm not saying may have, it was. Okay, so de but DESA's decision to go forward with the I think you should money talk, makes I, it that's, look that's worse my, that's than my, what that's happened my answer under Ban Ki-moon. Majid. Uh, just, you seem to be, Evelyn, Evelyn, please. You seem to be saying in this case that, that China Energy Fund Committee has so little relationship to the UN, it's only member states that no audit is needed, but in fact, Sun Kyan Ip had far fewer uh, connections to the UN. I guess I wanted you, can you articulate, is there a new standard being applied by the Guterres administration to the UN's need to investigate itself when a major indictment comes down? Because there's photographs of Mr. Patrick Ho, now in jail, with Ban Ki-moon, Yu Wu Hong Bo, with, with DESA, a secretariat agency, in a much more extensive fashion. There is no, than, there is no watering Sun down of, of standards, all, all issues of corruption it directly involving the UN need to be uh, need to be investigated right. and that is that but is so clear. Patrick Ho giving money okay. to DESA is, doesn't that, trigger it, it? I think I've just answered okay my, the other question has to do with the CITES meeting that's begun mm -hmm. today in Geneva the the co convention mm -hmm. on the international traffic mm -hmm. in endangered species um, you've been say, you've said for about two weeks now that the deputy secretary general's signatures on the Rosewood should should be answered by Nigeria and I want to the, the the compliance report prepared by CITES itself said says in paragraphs 21 and 22 that they believe that these were filed retrospective permits after the wood was already in China and that they've asked questions to the Nigerian authority, none of which have been answered. So if they're not answering CITES, I'm pretty sure they're not going to answer inner city press. So I want to ask you, now that it's been more than two weeks, and I know that this, the Deputy Secretary General is in town, it's, it, if the Nigerian authorities are not answering, is it her position, just yes or no, that when she signed the certificates, 4,000 certificates, this wood was already in China? given that that would be illegal under CITES. Her, her position is that uh, everything she did uh, was within uh, the bounds of the law, and next time she has a press appearance, I know she'll be delighted when to answer, answer those questions, whenever there is. Matthew? Yeah, I just, you, you were here, so you heard it. I guess what, I, what I'm wondering is, given what the President of the General Assembly has said about, about you know, not just his own transparency, but I, it seems to me that he's trying to speak about the transparency of the General Assembly and the, the process of the UN beyond the Secretariat. The Secretariat has apparently taken absolutely no steps after that indictment. No OIOS audit, as it was done in the case of Eng Lapsang and Sun Kyan Foundation, no inquiries of any kind, saying that it's up to member states. Given that he represents the member states, and does he see a need? I mean, for example, will this group which is described in the indictment in some detail as being a bribery vehicle in the same way that Sun Kyan Ip Foundation was, remain, remain accredited to, to ECOSOC, remain a funder of, of I know you that's said, a question the DESA part is for the ECOSOC. secretary. Well, that's the question for the Economic and Social Council. They have their own president. Uh, and, and who's that, your, who's your, your counterpart for the president of ECOSOC? Do they have a spokesperson? 
the you'd have to follow up with, with economic and social council. As far as I know, I, I've never heard of them having a spokesperson, but uh, they have a president definitely who who can be contacted. And I think your questions would would be valid for for that person. And uh, sorry, just to go back to you, Matthew, because I, I don't want you to think that I'm ignoring your question, but as we've said in this room many times, the president strongly believes in, in transparency and ethics, and that's why he's leading by example with respect to his own office. I just can't speak, as you can probably understand, for, for former presidents of the General Assembly. I can't speak about NGOs that, that were accredited by an economic and social council that has nothing to do with the General Assembly. That is a separate organ of the United Nations. That's why you, I'm sure you can understand why I'm being a bit careful here, but why I also want to stress the importance of ethics and transparency to the president of the General Assembly. You Shea Gaudio, former foreign minister of Senegal, charged with money laundering, Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, bribery of Idris Deby, president of Chad. Today, in connection with China Energy Fund Committee, Sam Kutessa, Museveni, Patrick Ho. Today we asked the UN a series of questions and they answered none of them. At least the PGA spokesman referred to ECOSOC, so we've emailed some questions to them. But the spokesman for Antonio Guterres has confirmed implicitly that no audit, no action, nothing. Just trips to Lisbon. After an indictment, Antonio Guterres and Amina Mohammed's DESA went forward and used one million dollars from the NGO whom the indictment makes clear was a bribery vehicle. Now, you could say they haven't been proven guilty yet, but in, under, even under Ban Ki-moon, Ban Ki-moon, whose own relatives faced trial for corruption using his name, Ban Ki-moon returned the money of Sun Kyan Ip after the indictment. Antonio Guterres, not so much. Complaints about food quality on the 38th floor. Accepting and benefiting from press censorship at the UN. Raised to him 10 months ago. Raised to Allison Smale as head of Department of Public Information. Since she belatedly took the job, wonder what certificate she may have signed to explain her late arrival. In the case of Amina Mohammed, she came late because she had to find 4,000 certificates for Rosewood. Now under discussion, at the CITES, Convention on Illegal International Traffic in Endangered Species, meeting in Geneva. What kind of a UN is it whose number two is charged with trafficking Rosewood <laughs> and whose number one uses a million dollars? from an NGO, a Chinese oil company's NGO, named in an indictment right here in 500 Pearl Street. A corrupt organization, they'll say. We're going in. Courtroom 11B. Judge Marrero. Um, we'll see if they brought Gaddy over from the NC MCC. I bet you they will. Might be more effective that way. Okay, we're going in. Okay, we're just out of the courthouse. It was a long argument in front of a, not ju a different judge, Judge Pauly. Suffice it to say, Sheikh Gadio, who was in the courtroom, had, mit, had also had the general consul of Senegal in New York with him. Sheikh Gadio will be out on bail tomorrow, as early as tomorrow. He, they asked for him to be released today. He was not. But uh, he'll have GPS. He'll have to be in his house in, in Maryland. It's all very kind of shadowy. The house apparently has been sitting empty for a decade. Sheikh Gadio will be in the house in Maryland uh, with GPS and with pretrial services calling him every day on a landline as specified by Judge Pauly at different times of day. Still, still, reference was made, and this is what the prosecutor should, uh, or the system itself should worry about, to the Eng Lap Seng case, the fact that, the, that, that Eng Lap Seng, even after conviction, is in, a, in his home on 47th Street. So basically, the argument now, Sheikh Gadio, who, when we last came here on Wednesday, was represented by federal defenders, i.e. indigent, had Debevoise and Plimpton, big white shoe law firm, and they said he's a highly respected individual, Senegal is not a failed state. It was, you know, we're going to write an article with all of that in there. There's no extradition treaty. And it emerged that Mrs. Sheikh Gadio, also Dr. Gadio, works for the UN, works for the UN in Equatorial Guinea, also not in the United States. I mean, obviously that's not in the United States, but she's not. The argument seemed to come down to what are the connections to the United States. Uh, and the prosecution talked a lot about a, uh, an energy, Chinese energy conglomerate that could come zooping in, zooping in with money to pay off the people that are signing for the bond. Um, these prosecutors have, Eng Lap Seng, although they won the Eng Lap Seng case, wait, we've got a camera out here. Wait a moment, are we going to have some Gadio business? Let's check it out. We're going to go there. We're going to, we'll do our stand up there. So there's the situation. It was a long argument. Uh, Mr. Richenthal for the prosecution. 
um, Devin Voice and Plinton for the defendant, the consul. There was about 13 people. I would think they were probably Senegalese defending Sheikh Gadio. Sheikh Gadio was not. He was in kind of a an informal attire. He gave him the thumbs up. He had a French translator. Sheikh Gadio did. Um, although, as you'll see from the video that we put up, I, I don't know if they're thinking that Sheikh Gadio is going to come rolling out, but he's not. Gadio is not coming out. Che Gaudio is uh, still under under control. So we'll, we may sign it off from here. The, the interesting thing that came out is the wife connection and the fact that the UN, again, our interest in this is I'm all for innocent until proven guilty, but the UN is corrupt. The UN now, twice in a row, is shown to be not only the venue, but the facilitator of this type of corruption. And it has gotten worse under Antonio Guterres. Under Ban Ki-moon, they you know stepped back, gave the money back, threw the press in the street, under, under Guterres, they leave, the, they leave the press in the street and they take the money. They took the money. They took $1 million from China Energy Fund Committee after the indictment. And that's an outrage. To be continued.